Welcome back uh, to the show. We're still here on Morning Dew and we're talking to Mr. Aki Fatunke, a public um, commentator, a social commentator, and of course he is a chartered accountant. We've been talking about the ongoing invasion of Russia into Ukraine. So Mr. Fatunke has been giving us a great deal of analysis with, of the situation on the ground. So Mr. Fatunke, back to what I asked, um, I said, with the poor management, as you said, of uh, evacuation of nationals, Nigerian nationals from Ukraine, and right now with tensions getting higher, is that a possibility that everybody can be airlifted or probably go through some road track to another country where they can be airlifted with minimal to no loss of lives of our citizens? I would say with hope and with faith that yes, it's still possible and it's going to be a crucible, it's going to be hard, it's going to be a more of gnashing of teeth. Absolutely no doubt about that. I know that uh, uh, like in everything in our daily lives, air peace has been contracted or maybe suggested that they will begin the airlifting. Um, about 4,000 plus Nigerians are stranded, so they will go from the first tranche, hopefully. Secondly, is the fact that, uh, and I must say this, in all strife, Nigeria, despite our disunity, we have always, one way or the other, you know, loved. Supporting ourselves. I saw telephone numbers, well-to-do people in Hungary, in Poland, saying, if you are a if you're a student, please call all these numbers. You, despite all our problems, is something I think we can pull out there and show the world. Something like you know, a Red Cross, Red Crescent kind of situation. I am also certain I have to say this to you, and I say this to myself, I say this to you, I say this to Nigerians. Um, it's not going to be a cut paste story. No. So before we went this on. will come with a lot of pains. Let's have a lot of patience. Gradually, we will. I think, I'm sorry, I think we should try and make sure that we give credence to the weak, to the infirm and the physically challenged amongst us. We can arrange that amongst ourselves. I'm talking of uh, people in Kiev, in Ukraine now, so that we can just do an order process and get us out of, out of, out of this uh, quagmire that we have we are found ourselves. Before we went on break, you did mention the Dafo uh, issue, when we had similar problems like this. And I just think that it's our strength we come from behind to win in almost all the cases. Don't you think that whether we delay going there or not, we must at the end win and bring back our people home? Because we've seen such experience before, as in the case of the fort that you mentioned. Well, yes, <laughs> again in faith and trust, I say yes, we will do it. We, we, we never prepared for certain things and it came our way. You know, <laughs> in our football sometimes, when we did the Atlanta, nobody gave us a chance, so just out of the blues. But my point is that we must not continue to depend on luck. We must be structured and we must be planned. I just didn't want to tell you that I got a distress call from Dafoe and said I couldn't reach my embassy. Remember, don't forget. Back then, our embassies were just like we have in here. People went and nobody was talking to them. Luckily for me, Honorable Bajabi Amila took my call and directed me to Mrs. Ukeje. I will never forget Mrs. Ukeje. I think she was representing PDP Abia. And I remember, I'm speaking on national, <laughs> national television now, I am going to have to get to the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, and she was going to get back to me. 
under 24 hours, she sent me a test. In this same country, Nigeria, I didn't, I've never met her. I didn't know her. Honorable Bajabi Amila will not see me on the road and say he knows me. But say, if that would have worked then, I think things have gone backwards a lot. Yes, I agree with you that despite that, the spirit of the Nigerian, and I'm saying, the spirit of the Nigerian, which should be the center focus of Africa. Let me also now add that the fourth time, Nigerians were evacuated, and they made sure that other nationals who are not necessarily Nigerians were accommodated in the big brother puzzle. I think that can still happen, but I'd like to see something much more structured, something much more ordered, management of change, change management, crisis management. Let it, let it just be, be seen, because like she's asking, and you seem to be saying, this may not be over very soon. I will want to have the minimal casualty the minimal pain as much as we can. But it tells you, my dear brother, that uh, we are just not ready. Uh, somebody will say, I'm looking at. Uh, are you saying I'm, that I'm, I'm looking we? There. What about what we are finding at home when we have not been able to even take care of okay. certain things at home? How do we now then begin to. We believe, you, know, you know what you uh, said in your flight now? You know, should there be a loss of cabin? Please, first of all, take care of take yourself care of before you take care of your, of your child. <laughs> We, we, we just have not been able to get ourselves together. I think that leaves a lot uh, to be desired. I am a Nigerian. You and I'm a Nigerian too. Nigerian. And I know I am not the type of Nigerian that should not be able to plan, should not be able to put character, competence, capacity, and to be deft in everything that I do. That is the brand of Nigeria that I want to see. So my criticism this morning is very altruistic. It's focused. I'm saying it clearly. We could do it much better, both at home and outside of what is happening to our, our people in, in Ukraine. OK, sir. Um, with that uh, done and discussed, um, what is, we still have to go back to the issue of the crisis. Uh, there was a meeting yesterday between um, the Ukrainian and um, Russian sides. What is the outcome of this situation presently? Well, from what I read, there's still quite a number of uh, uh, suspicion. Yes, I know the diplomats were supposed to be meeting at, uh, uh, at a border. But I also know that uh, the Ukrainian president uh, was not all true enthused about that. He wanted a neutral ground for obvious reasons, which I, I like to believe. Um, I'm afraid Vladimir Putin has lost a lot of trust. He should not have attacked when he attacked. There should have been much more discussions. So I am not about seeing anything concrete coming out of it, but better than nothing. So let's open up the avenue for discussions. So if the Ukrainian president, who is, by the way, leading by, <laughs> by the front, showing good example, is saying, I do not trust you, he has a good point. I do not think Biden trusts him. I do not also think that Germany, another story entirely, which has been part of the Cold War, the North Three pipeline that I know America has always wanted to prevent. Russia supplies the best, the cleanest gas in that part of the world. People have thought that part was not going to be well done with. And then I saw, I saw Germany now coming out and saying, we're going to be saying it. Australia said, we're going to be saying it. Am I that country, Nigeria, is also saying that we support 
I think it's just high time, I pray, that Vladimir Putin will just agree that yes, what he has proposed for those talks and Belarus talks may not get to the root of it. Let's look for a neutral ground, a neutral ground. Otherwise, I am afraid. Sir, let me take you to. That might be the end. Mm. Let me oh, take you all to. All right. Um, oh, so sorry to cut you in there, but uh, <laughs> it's been a richly informative discourse with Mr. Fatukun. Thank you again, Thank sir, you for much, being sir. with us here yeah, and giving you your very strong analysis of the whole situation. Thank all you. right. Uh, we'll go on a break right now. We'll be right back. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لأعلكم تتقون.